Emma, look at that! Oh, it's screaming. That is unbelievable. Oh, nice hit. Well done! Oh. Look at that! Not a bad sight! Oh, mate. Hi and welcome to Fishing WA. Today we're down here at Albany targeting these critters, the calamari. They not only taste great, they're fun to catch. We've got a great show lined up. Let's have a look. A good accommodation equals comfort and a good night's sleep. The boat ramp is very close to our squidding grounds, which is Middleton Beach in the King George Sound. Today I'm fishing with good mate, Morris Wilkinson, who not only runs the Park Avenue Hollow units, he's a very keen fisherman indeed. It would be a short drive to our squidding destination and sticking to the designated channel markers will give you a safe passage out. Now techniques for squidding. There's no right or wrong way, it's whatever you prefer. Now some people prefer a rod, some people like a hand line, like myself, I love using a hand line. That one there is just a 10 pound hand line. So cheap, inexpensive for squidding and at the end I've got a breeding clip. That way I can actually just change over different squid jigs. Could be lighter or heavier depending on the depth or the speed of the drift and different colours. Mix it up. Go bright colour, go orange and pink. If that's not working, go a dark colour. So I've got the hand line out. At the same time, I've got the rod and reel as my stinger. So this one here's got a little bit lighter squid jig. This one's got a little bit heavier because I'm working it. This one here, I'm not working it. It's just basically going to be in the rod holder, just moving around with the rod tip. And naturally, the squid will come up there and eat that. So I've got basically the rod out, I've got the hand line out. And the key is with the hand line, keep on moving the jig. Let it sink back down to the bottom, jig it. If you're using a rod, you normally would basically whip it up a few times and you basically would wind the yeah, actual rod, whip it up a little bit like that, wind down, pause, let the squid jig go back down. Whip it up a few times, wind it back down. So if that's a good way with the rod. But in this situation, I'm solo, Harry, you're done to me again, mate. Where are you? I'm going to leave that in the rod holder. Got the hand line. Drifting over this weed bed here. So sand and weed, that's where the actual squid normally hang out. That's where they lay their eggs. So any sort of good sort of sand and weed patch up and down the coastline should produce squid. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Not only five minutes into it and onto it. It's a decent squid on the hand line. Just here at uh, Middleton Beach. Basically, that's Middleton Beach. That's Emu Point right there. And we're in Albany chasing big squid. Just in the background, I can see a few guys there chasing salmon off the rocks. And, oh, and I'm on as well. The rod's going off. Onto Squidly Diddly. Now, if there's one thing I love targeting, much as I love my sort of super deep fish, bass, groper and harpooka, I love my squidding. It's close to home, accessible to all, and have a look at that. That's a good squid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you back at home. If you're on a smaller boat where you've got a lower freeboard, you can actually lean over the gunnel. And what you do, you're going to bring the squid around, let it get rid of its ink, bring it around, grab it behind its eyes, like that. Now what Morris, this is a good mate of mine from Melbourne, he said to me, what you do is you tip it basically vertical, let it drain out its water, and that way, can't shoot any ink, no water, no ink. Get rid of the uh, hand line. Face it away. Or if you hate your mate, point it towards him, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you back at home, an Albany squid. Have a look at that. I know you want to squirt, but you can't. A cracking squid. Best thing about sort of country areas, they have big squid. If you're in Exmouth, it's northern calamari. Down here at Albany, this one's a southern calamari. These ones are long claspers. They're designed to go out there and grab your uh, squid jig. Normally it would be a bait fish or prawn. The long claspers, normally the real long ones are males, short ones are females. And have a look at that. A decent squid. They got, whoa, steady. They've got decent eyes, big eyes. Why? They're normally a nighttime feeder. So big eyes to be able to uh, see their uh, bait fish. They normally eat small little bait fish, 
and obviously prawns and, and uh, shrimps and whatnot. So you're not going home. This one's going to be basically spiked, which I'll show you very soon. Putting the esky on ice, and I'm going to get my jig back out there. Well, it doesn't rain, it pours. I was just about to spike this squid you can see here on the gunnel and the rod on ski. That's the thing with squidding. If you do get on a squid, normally mark it on your GPS, keep on drifting. You get no more squid, no more bites, then go back around and re-drift that track line. Now, I like to mix it up. I love my hand line, but at the same time, it's also good to have a stinger out. When I say stinger, a rod with a squid jig on it, you can use a baited uh, squid jig or baited what they call pencil jig, which is basically like a metal spike with barbs at the end. You can basically put it into a whiting or a herring, what it may be. In this case here, under a float normally you would do that. In this case, I just put out a squid jig whilst we're drifting. The boat action is moving the rod tip, moving the jig. But basically, yeah, so you, you use the size, say, two and a half and say five metres of water. That way, you're not going to be biting into weed. Because these squid will actually come up, even right up to near the surface, to actually eat a squid jig. So, don't have your jig too heavy. That's why you have such a good selection of squid jigs. And have a look at that. That's on the Breeden Pink Silver Mix. So on the hand line, I'm using size three. This one's two and a half. Yep. Plenty of water, no ink, which is even better. They normally actually have ink sacs all through their body and under threat they'll mix that water with the ink sac and obviously propel ink. In this situation I've come unscathed which is great that's why I wear a black top but uh, now have a look at that another squid as mentioned doesn't rain it pours one on the hand line one on the uh, one on the rod Albany squidding I'm loving it to find out more information about Fish and WA or just want to ask a question, like us on Facebook. Now, to spike a squid, I know it sounds funny, a lot of people normally scoff when you say an icky jimmy uh, spike for a squid jig, this is it. Now normally you spike fish to keep it, obviously one, you kill them humanely, two, to keep them at its best. This is actually a proper squid icky jimmy spike. It's got two prongs there. I'll show you right now how to kill a squid humanely and it will taste better on the pan. Have a look at this. Okay, so you've got left and right side. So basically you want to paralyze the left and the right and then also the head. So three ways basically, or three points to actually kill a squid. One into the head, like that there. Straight away it went white. So that's killed off the head. The prongs are gone in and then left and right. Just gotta make sure I get it right in. And that there should basically have killed the squid off completely. And there you go. One by spiked squid. The big girls go in the esky, this one's going in the esky. Today it's all about catching squid. Normally I release a few fish when it comes to squid, it goes into the esky. <laughs> Love it. Oh yeah, it's not a bad squid at all. Just another re-drift back over where we were getting squid before. It's always a way. These squid lay eggs in the same sort of weed beds. So, going back over the same spot, you always find more squid. There's not one, there's normally about six or eight in one area. And if it goes a bit quiet, then try another drift. Different sort of angle. But, I ain't gonna be going off this drift because this spot is really firing up. Very nice. Now, normally I lean over and obviously grab the squid, but you can also use a net as well. I'm just going to show you a few different techniques. That net there, a little Berkeley one, I normally use that for whiting on stick baits, but you can also net your squid as well. I prefer to grab them by hand. So a few different techniques to show you back at home. I'm so used to now grabbing them behind the head, but a little net like this is quite handy. Good for brim, whiting, and squid. If I was to put that basically back down to the bottom there and it's on sand, it would go all white. If I put it down onto the weed, it would actually blend in. The actual modelled sort of markings of the squid can change within a split second to match the base of the background. So put on a dark background or go dark, put on a light uh, background like sand or what it may be, 
it will go very light in colour. So they really are like the octopus, stealthy critters. Another squid, Albany Sunshine. It was well worth the four and a half hour drive to catch quali calamari. Ratfish and WA TV series, you've seen us use the extreme gear. Let me show you just some of the products. We've got the extreme PE braid, very well priced. From brim braid all the way through to dewfish, awesome stuff. We've got the extreme hooks. From skippy size all the way to dewfish, snapper, you name it, ultra sharp, ultra strong. We've got the metal slice, everyone loves a metal slice there. From herring all the way up to tailor salmon size, great product. You always need leader, the extreme leader. From low poundage all the way up to the heavy stuff there for offshore deep water fishing. If you're chasing dewfish or snapper, bolch and groper, the octo jig and the metal jig, all different sizes, different colours, this will get you a lot of reef fish and out of the rods. The Fishing WA Extreme range is huge, from squidding to bottom bouncing to trolling to poppering to jigging, you name it, we've got it. Very well priced, ultra light. Check them out at your nearest Extreme Tackle retailers or check them out online, extremetackle.com.au. So important to look after your squid. As soon as you pull them out of the water, don't just put them in a bucket. Ideally, you want to use ice. So right now I've got the esky here. It's actually not my esky, it's Morris's. Got the esky there with ice. You don't have to do an ice brine, just broken ice over it. Keep them cold. Now it's so important to make sure you're over the right ground. Just then, Morris basically said, ah, oh, this drift's not so good, Ryan. We're over more sand and bit of weed. So make sure you re-drift the right patch. Sand and weed, got the hand line out. Cast that one out. Got the trusty rod and reel. Let's put that out. Stinger. Everything in my favour. The rod's out. The hand line is out. The sun is rising. It's actually a bit cold here at Albany at the moment, but I reckon the squid will basically be on the chew. First thing in the morning, it's prime time. Late in the Arvo, near sunset is a prime time. And also around high tide as well. So there's sort of three different times you can get squid. Often people say, oh, but during the daytime you don't get them. You do, mix it up. Change color of squid jigs, change depth. Sometimes they're in deeper water. Oh, you know when it's a good squid, when it's actually pulling what I call mono drag, with well, that hand line. 10 pound hand line and it's pull on drag. I use my fingers as basically like a bit of a break. On a reel, you use obviously your drag. Now a lot of people when they actually hook up a squid, whether being on a rod um, or on a hand line, they just pull it in real fast. Normally you just rip tentacles, you lose squid, you get inked, not good. Just take your time, there's no rush. Have a look at that on the top there. Very nice. Decent squid here, certainly certainly becoming very popular now, the whole squid thing. Even now they're doing comps around Perth, the, the Calamari Classic, and also down here, Morris was saying, they're now doing squid comps. This one's actually got a little bit of ink on him, so I'll just wash him off. Do a few little circles, get rid of the ink. Behind the eyes, upside down. That's a great little tip there by Morris. Drain that water out. Look at that. Just put my fingers into the mantle there. Wanted that Yozuri. Now mix it up. I use Gancraft, I use Yozuri, different brands, different colors. That one right there, Yozuri, you can see it right there, all chewed up completely, but it's working. And another, oh, I want to go back in the water. Albany squid. This place is starting to fire. I want to get back in the water ASAP, Albany. Why wouldn't you come down here? Target squid like this. Okay, it's Jimmy time again. I'll just do this very quickly. It's actually got on this tool here also a barb straightener as well. So if you squash your barb or uh, basically gets damaged, you can straighten it. Now, one into the head there, which I'll get right. It's a bit slippery. There you go. It's gone white. And left and right of a squid, paralyzed both sides of their body. To there and to there. That's now one by Spike Squid. Ready for the esky. We came back for it. Had a bit of a nudge. Drop the jig back down. It's so important if you do get a basically a bite from a squid and no hook up, just drop back down again. Often I'll come back for it. And that he did. 
Now, best time for squidding is always around sort of that uh, winter time period. So we're leading into winter, so autumn into winter. So anywhere from sort of May, June, July, August is the best time, but you can get them all year round. There you go, not a bad squid. Just gonna kneel down. That Yozuri in that pink, it's like a pink orange sort of color mix is absolutely doing the damage. Talking about damage, you can see all the chew marks around the back here. The squid are absolutely demolishing that. And it's amazing, every drift right now is producing squid. Some big, some small. There's no size limit on squid whatsoever. So if it's small, don't feel bad taking it home and eating it because at the end of the day, they only last 12 months. That's their lifespan, 12 months. Like an octopus, which is around about 12 to 16 months, they die out. So bag limit is 15 per angler or 30 per boat. I'm solo today. So far, my bag limit is getting better and better. This year, we are giving away $2,000 worth of extreme tackle, as well as a Bradley six rack smoker valued at $1,200. To enter, all you have to do is like us on Facebook. Now at the end of my hand line or rod and reel, I always use a breed and snap clip. Now, you don't actually have to use your fingers to actually open it up, it's just a twist style mechanism. So, I'll show you here, just use the eye of the squid jig, twist and rotate. It's that easy, it's a breed and snap clip and it gives it plenty of action in the water as well. So important to have a snap clip to mix it up. Different colours, try bright colours, try dark colours, try natural colours, mix it up and also different weights. If you're not mixing it up, you're not getting results, well, it's time to get back in the water. Every drift nearly has been producing squid. Morris has got some great spots here out of Albany. I did say they're, they're very plentiful. Considering we've only gone to two locations, this place is going off. Oh, lucky that it's just water only. And there you go. And normally I take every squid home, but I reckon I've got more than enough for a feed, so it could be my last squid for the day, I'm not too sure, but I might just release it anyway. There he goes. Well, I'm all slimed up, but what a great feed I've got here in the Esky. Now the boat ramp is only five minutes around the corner, and the best thing about it, the accommodation, also five minutes from the boat ramp. Albany's turning it on. Why would you not want to spend four and a half hour trip down here to get into big squid at Albany? King George Whiting, the skippy, the salmon, and squidding. This place rocks. All right, we've got the big squid, one of the bigger ones from today. Got the trusty knife. Now, a lot of people at home say, how do you clean squid? For some, it's straightforward, some not so. It's gonna show you right now, just quickly, how to basically clean a squid, prepare it, ready for the fry pan. Let's have a look. Okay, so cut off the head. Makes a great bait. You can actually cut the tentacles off there and cook those up like that. But today I'm just gonna be eating the main part, which is the actual body piece. Take the wings off, how? Put your fingers in underneath here. Break that seal right there. Follow it all the way along to take off one of the wings. Do the same on the other side. Put your fingers in, break that seal all the way up. Take off the wings. So the head's gone. Wings gone. Now, matter of pulling out the feather, which is inside, that, that's its backbone. It's a little bit yucky, a little bit messy, but they taste so delish. One by feather gone. Internals all out, all in one piece. That's it now. What we're going to do now is use a scarab pad just to get rid of the skin. Nice and handy. So scarab pad that off. Just go over it a few times. It's gonna make this nice and quick and easy. So I won't go and do the whole lot. Then you cut into squid rings. Small little pieces. Like I said, a little bit messy, but it tastes so good. I'll just give those a wash down now and I'll give you a close look. Okay, quick rinse down. The old scarab pad's nice and handy, gets your rings nice and clean. Have a look at that. Calamari rings doesn't get much better. Now, cooking wise, you can basically dust in flour and shallow fry it. You can put it in corn flour, egg yolk, and then breadcrumbs and do it deep fry. Doesn't matter. It's going to taste delish. Tonight's dinner, I'm looking forward to it.
this place is going off. Jeez, all I want to do is release the squid, wash my hands, didn't even get time, and the rod loads up, and this is a big squid. I need to just put that cast out, again, on the drop, in about 10 to 12 metres now, drops away, on ski. Look at that. Well, I'm going to net this one, because I reckon this is my last squid, because I've had such an awesome day. I want to finish on a high and take this one home. Look at that. In the nice light. Love the Ozuri squid jig. I'll get out of the net and I'll give you a close look. Now that's one big cracking squid. Now in Albany, that's probably a normal size one. For us in Perth, obviously that's a stonker. So big thanks to Morris, obviously for getting me out here onto some of his secret squidding spots. What an awesome morning, squid after squid after squid. Make sure you get the opportunity to come down to Albany, get into squid just like me. Thanks for joining us, we'll see you next time on Fishing WA.